In this video, I'm gonna break down the exact steps I take to make $100,000 a year again if I start back over with zero sales skills, zero contacts, zero network, and no money. Just so you have some context, I'm Marcus Shan. I've generated over 700 million sales in 13 years in corporate sales and sales leadership roles. But before this, I grew up with no real skills and had just worked hard at my immigrant parents' Chinese restaurant doing everything under the sun. Now, I share that with you because I'm nobody special and I wasn't born with any real talent or some sort of rich background. But here's the thing. Not only have I generated hundreds of millions in revenue and earned millions of commissions and equity, I've also worked with over 600 clients in the last five years, helped them install repeatable sales systems and playbooks that generates predictable revenue. All in, these clients are literally earning now 250K, 500K, and over a million dollars a year as a result. Now, if you watch any of my other videos, I typically share more advanced strategies for those who may already be earning maybe 100K, 200K, or even more a year. So this is for the people who have not quite broken that six-figure mark. Whether you're just starting out or you've been in sales game for a bit, I want to make this video for you. Also, we recently launched our product, Sales Accelerator Labs, where I'm literally giving away the exact sales system to help me go from zero to 700 million B2B sales. Literally giving away stuff that clients have paid me fifty to $75,000 for that you're gonna get for free just for signing up. You can check it out in the description below. So how would I go from earning $0 to $100,000 a year and more? Well, I'll do it very similar to what I did to begin with. So the first thing I would do is I'll look for the sales jobs that had the greatest learning and growth opportunities. Now, the mistake I see a lot of people make is when they're trying to break into sales is they're going for the biggest companies with the greatest compensation plans, the ones they see in all the top rankings, which seems to make a lot of sense because there's huge upside, they're great companies, they're generally pretty stable, you can make a lot of money, which is absolutely incredible. But the reality is when you have zero skills, zero experience like I did, it's really hard to break in those companies. So my focus would actually be on learning and not necessarily earning. Now, what I would first look for is I'd be looking for roles that actually had full cycle sales. So that's end to end sales from processing top of the funnel, doing outbound calls, emailing, even door knocking to actually book means to actually run the whole sales process to close and maybe even growing those accounts. And the reason I look for a full cycle role is I've seen it time and time again. A lot of sales people may be breaking the tech sales. They start as a BDR in which they're learning how to just do outbound, which is great. But when they go into an AE role, they don't really have the good transition to develop those skills to actually go to a full closing type role. And then on the flip side, I've also seen people who maybe were not that great of a BDR. They somehow make it into an AE role, but because they never learned how to truly prospect or do well, they actually struggle as an AE as well. And typically the account executives who are crushing it consistently, they're really good at generating and building their own pipeline. So if you go into a full cycle role first, you're learning the full sales process end to end, which means you event, you'll learn marketing, you'll learn top of funnel, you'll learn outbound, you'll learn messaging, you learn how to take someone from cold to close, which is a great skill to actually have for developing net new logo accounts. So again, I'll look for opportunities where I had the opportunity to do full cycle sales, end to end sales. Now, what I also look for is, especially in those type of roles, is I'll look for ones that have some sort of training program in place, whether they're a, a bigger company, mid-sized or smaller, some sort of training program that I can vet out with them so they can give me some fundamentals to, and how they sell, some sort of playbook as well. Now, even if they have that in place, I'm not going to just take it and just run only with that. I would use it as a foundation. So this helps me build a base foundation of skills as part of it. So again, I look for full cycle opportunities that also have some sort of training program in place. Now, of course, there's also the compensation as well. So obviously, if you're brand new in sales and you're trying to go to a great you know, upside, sometimes the comp may not be as lucrative as you'd like it to be. In some situations, you walk into opportunity where you have the potential to make seven figures in year one, but it's also very unlikely as well. But I would want to look for an opportunity where, again, I'd be focused more on learning versus actually earning. So as long as I have a good comp where I can make at least $100,000 plus, and if I do a good job, I'm all in. If they actually had a 100% commission role, I would actually go for those type of roles as well because... If I have zero skills, it might be a little bit easier to actually land a job with them as well because it's very minimal risk for them. But on top of that, if it's 100% commission, generally speaking, 
the commission multiples are pretty high and pretty lucrative depending on the ticket size of what you are selling. And on top of that, because the company knows that you are taking on a risk, usually with compensation programs like that, you're able to earn quite a bit more. So for example, I know people who are in 100% commission roles and they're earning 500K, a million, $2 million a year in these roles that have no base salary, but the upside is so great as a result. Again, I'm not looking for the earning opportunity, I'm looking for the learning opportunity. So as long as I'm able to make at least 100K, if not more, great. Now, if they also happen to have upper mobility, that'd be just a great bonus as well. The second thing I'd focus on is becoming a student of the game even before I start. So the mistake I see a lot of people make is they want to wait until they're in that role to actually start learning, becoming really good at the role. And that's a huge mistake. I made a mistake myself personally. I waited until I was actually in the role. And because of that, it definitely delayed my skills and development. So I would actually start with looking for ways to increase my skills before I even start the role. So I'll be looking on LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever, looking for specific people that I know can teach me the fundamentals to be highly successful in sales. Now, what I also would do is I'd be vetting people out. I'd be looking for people that had proven results, not just for themselves doing the actual role over and over in their past experience, but also if they have, if they have students or clients, their results as well. And I've seen some of those people that are kind of, you know, an AE who maybe sold for a couple of years at a tech company and they, they try to start selling a course and maybe they have some testimonials, but all the testimonials are like, oh, hey, that was a really cool course. That was really knowledgeable, very informative. That is useless to me. I want to hear about people hitting quota, destroying quota, blowing out their numbers, making crazy money, getting promoted, buying homes, and just doing wild things with what they learned from that person. So I'll be taking my time to fully vet that person out if I'm going to start learning from them. And this is even with the free content. And the reason this is important is we're actually in an information overload age where there's so much content on YouTube, so much content on LinkedIn, so much content on TikTok and everywhere. The number one thing you can do is actually filter down to who to actually pay attention to. Because if you have too many ideas in, you're going to see conflicting opinions. And I found that personally for myself as well. So I would niche down, find the right people, fully vet them out and start learning from them. Now, if I could access some sort of funds or borrow funds or I have access to a credit card, car, I would invest into a coach before I even get started as well, because I know if I can build a really strong foundation, build really good habits in before I start, it's only going to serve me once I'm actually in the role. Now, if I didn't have access to borrowing money or credit cards or anything else, then I would start with obviously the free content or maybe some of their cheaper products that they have that's available so I can start learning as much as possible. And then as I start to make commissions, I can send into other programs. So for example, even today, when people that want to work with me, maybe they can't afford some of my high level coaching programs because it's, it's a significant investment. Some of them may start off with my free content on YouTube or on LinkedIn. Then they might maybe buy my book and then maybe they'll join Sales Accelerator Labs. And then of course they can extend up to more coaching as a result. So in my situation, if I couldn't access any money, I would start diving free into their content or, or I'd try to find ways to at least pay for some of their lower ticket items so I can acquire some of the deeper knowledge. So this way I'm walking in with a little more of a foundation of how to do things before actually going. But on top of that, by actually learning the right language, the lingo, and how to actually think like a top salesman, how to act like a top salesperson, this will only help me actually in the interview process as well as I'm looking to find secure my next opportunity. Now, after I've secured a job and I've interviewed well, I'm learning as well from the free content, maybe some paid content. The next thing I'm gonna do once I start that job is I'm going to identify the top five salespeople at the company doing exactly the role I'm currently doing. And I'm not going to just see if I can just pick their brain for a couple minutes, you know, see what they want, see what advice they have. Because generally speaking, when you walk in, they tell you things like, oh, you just got to work hard. You, you got to have patience. You have to have good territory. You got to have really high activity. Basically, they tell you things, generally speaking, I find are pretty useless and don't actually help you get results fast. So when I'm sitting down and having time with them, what I'm actually looking for is I want to identify exact mental models, behaviors, and habits routines of what they do. I want to know exactly what they do from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed through the entire week, quarter on quarter's end. This helps me identify what they're actually prioritizing and how they think. And as they're explaining why they make certain decisions, I want to understand the why behind the decision. This helps you learn 
mental models of thinking and making decisions regarding the actual role. I would also uncover what would they do differently if, with the knowledge they have now when they had to restart back over. Because reality is sometimes when we talk to some of these top reps, what they're doing right now is very different than what they did when they first started. So for example, they might have far more pipeline now, they have more history, they have a book of business, they have accounts that are actually working. Or if you're starting off brand new, you may not have that luxury. So you want to uncover what they would do differently with the knowledge they have now as well. I would also hop on the sales calls with them or get access to some of their gong recordings or sales call recordings for discovery, demo, other parts of the process so I could see how they actually do things and why they do things. And all for identify, I want to identify patterns as well. If I can get them to show me their cadences, their emails, and how they write emails, this will again help me build a stronger foundation as a result. Now, last but not least, I'll also have them walk me through the compensation plan together. Here's the reality. I find top salespeople look at comp plans very differently than average reps. Like they understand a whole new way to actually maximize all the accelerators so they can fully leverage that. So for example, I remember early on, because I didn't know my company well enough, I remember the very first quarter in my role, because I wasn't paying close attention to it, I made a pretty good income, pretty good commission. But then when my manager actually walked through with me, hey, listen, Marcus, you actually closed, it was like some insignificant $100, something just absolutely dumb. He's like, you actually made like 2x the commission as a result. And that was crazy for me to see because I didn't know my company well enough at that time, it actually cost me pretty much double that commission. It cost me what my commission would have been at double that actual amount. So have that top person walk through a comp plan with you together. Now, number four, I would do is I would get in on the action fast, meaning I would push to be getting on the phones, running sales calls as fast as possible. Generally speaking, I find most companies, they are delaying their salespeople from actually making calls, having sales calls, talking to customers, talking to prospects until way deeper into the process. Sometimes it's literally weeks or months later. I don't like that personally. I want to dive in as fast as possible because the longer it takes for me to learn the market, to learn the ICP, learn the pains, the problems, how they sp the impacts their business, how our solution actually helps deliver for them, the longer it takes for me to figure that out, the longer it takes for me to actually make money and to develop those skills to be successful. But on top of that, the longer it takes, the more my confidence is going to go down. And as we all know, confidence is absolutely vital in any sales role. So I would work hard to influence my sales leader if they weren't already allow me to go in the field early to let me start jumping on the calls, making calls, building lists, building my own cadences and start taking action as fast as possible so I can start building pipeline and learning and getting my teeth kicked in and ultimately building my rejection muscle. Now, number five, I would do 10x activity. If you've seen any of my other videos, I don't like to harp the activity drum of making more calls, sending more emails, etc. However, if I'm starting back over and have zero skills, that also means I have zero experience as well. So I don't know good, I don't know great. And what's gonna be really vital for me is actually the repetition of muscle memory. Whatever number my boss is gonna give me, I want to raise that number up by 10x. So for example, if my boss says, hey Marcus, I want you to make 50 calls this week, I would make 500 calls that week. If you think about this, it's not about necessarily trying to book more meetings, is this gives me 450 more repetitions than everybody else, so which will help me learn from it, right? As long as I keep a very tight feedback loop, I'll learn from every failed call. I can learn the objections, I can learn the concerns, I can learn the issues. And I'll give you a really simple example. In 2011, I switched to a brand new company, it's after being in B2B sales for over four years, having success, et cetera, and I'm in a whole new company, and again, I convinced my boss to let me get on the phones early. I convinced him to let me start making calls, actually go in the field as well. And one of the things we had to do as in addition to that was go into physical territory and like meet with business in person, right? Cold call them live in person, which is, by the way, a whole different game if you've never done before. It's uh, very interesting, very fun. can be scary to some people if you've never done before. So anyways, this is my uh, first week on the job. I asked him, I said, hey, how many businesses should I walk into? And he said, I want you to walk into 50. I wanted to shoot for 500 at that point. So I did my best. Uh, I didn't walk into 500, but I ended up doing just over 300 businesses that week. So I literally walked physically by foot into 300 businesses in the area. And it was amazing because I learned so much as a result. And I remember going to his uh, office on a Friday afternoon and knocking on the door 
And he just gave him an update about how the week was. was. He said, hey, Marcus, how was those door knocks? And I said, oh, pretty good. He's like, did you get 50? And I, I don't think he's expecting me to get 50 because I think maybe most people just didn't do that or just did a crappy job. And I said, yeah, actually, I did. I got over 300. He's, he, didn't, he actually didn't believe me. So I literally went to my car. And had, I had this in a Nike shoe box, and I pulled out over 300 cards, which I had ordered around the category. And I showed them, like, hey, over 300. Now, again, not all of them are very good prospects. I, I was merely doing it to get repetition in because I wanted to practice my frameworks, the objection. I wanted to learn what the market was saying. And that was amazing from getting market intel as well. Going back to if I'm starting off brand new with zero skills and I need to develop it, I know I have willpower, so I'm going to implement 10x activity to the best of my ability. The next thing I do, and this ties into that piece of doing that 10x type activity, which is I'm going to build a calendar that's going to be 90% IPAs, that's income producing activities. So mapping out what my routine is going to look like from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. So I have a really simple plan to follow. I remember just being brand new and being lost like all the time, not waking up, making terrible decisions all throughout the day, not knowing what I should be doing, just guessing and making decisions on a spot. And the reality, because I was making decisions on a spot, most of them were not good decisions. So for example, if I'm in the field or if I'm, I'm going to make calls, it's so much easier. Let me just take a little break, grab my phone, start flipping through TikTok or Instagram. And just before I know it, two hours goes by. Versus if I have a really clear plan on exactly what I'm going to execute, it's going to be income producing activities. It's far easier for me to say, okay, cool. Today, I'm going to take action on what's in my calendar from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. And especially early on, because frankly, I probably have zero appointments, nothing really going on outside of maybe any time internal training. This allows me to focus my energy on that 10x activity. Number seven, in addition to all this, as part of that routine is I would be practicing after hours. I did this early on and this paid me dividends. Literally after hours, I'm only rewriting my frameworks, my scripts, and I'm practicing, I'm role playing just out loud, literally standing in front of a mirror, just like I'm practicing for a speech back in like high school or college. I'm literally practicing over and over because I want to come through buttery, smooth, and confident. I know I can't always control what happens when I'm actually live from a prospect, but I know I can control and I can focus on the practice part. So just like top athletes spend 99% of their focus on practice and only 1% actually in, in the actual game, it's the same thing in sales as well. So after hours, I would be practicing role playing, build mastery. So if you think about this, if I have 10x activity throughout the week and then after hours, I'm still practicing, this is going to help me build muscle memory because of repetition. And as we all know, repetition is a father of mastery. And if I can get other colleagues to do with me or my spouse to do with me, even better. But ultimately, my goal is I want to get more repetition in of building muscle memory. I want to be instinctual. If someone throws me a ball, I know exactly what to do. If someone throws me an objection, I know exactly what to say. And if you, if I only rely on just do, learning how to do that in front of a prospect, I'm going to botch a lot of opportunities. Because the reality is, especially early on, I know if I'm not going to be good at booking meetings, the very few means I have, I want to make sure I can show up and give 100%. I don't want to botch my opportunity, especially if it's a 100% commission role. The next thing I'll do to help myself make 100K a year as fast as possible is I would reflect daily. I would just write down my wins of the day and my learnings from the day. In fact, I've been doing this now for almost 20 years. I still do, to, do this to this day. And this is really powerful because this helps me recognize, hey, even if I didn't close a deal that day, what did I do today that was a win? It could be a micro win. Maybe it could be as simple as I, stuck, I had a plan and I stuck to my plan. That's going to build my confidence. I know I can stick to my plan. It could be I did my best executing some objection handling. And even though it didn't go perfectly well, I did my best. All right. And what's really cool is when you recognize these micro wins every single day, they start stacking up every single day. It adds to your confidence. On top of that, I'm going to write down my learning. So if I learned something new or interesting, I'm going to write down what did I learn today I can apply for tomorrow. And by simply having this very tight feedback loop for yourself, this helps you identify what the right behaviors that you want to keep doing, but also helps you identify maybe some of the behaviors that you want to adjust or fix over time. So that's a really powerful exercise that I still do to this day, almost 20 years later. Now, speaking of a tight feedback loop, number nine, I'm going to set up weekly one-on-ones with my manager. What's crazy is how many managers who don't actually set up one-on-ones with their team, unless their team really asks for it. And some of you might think that's a little bit strange, but for me, I want to have a very tight feedback loop because I simply don't know what I don't know. 
And the reality is I can go back, I can have a tight feedback loop myself, but sometimes I'm simply not gonna know if I'm doing something terrible. So I would set up times with my manager every single week to discuss what I did, what I could do better, to set up time to have them go on sales calls with me so they can coach and guide me and ask them for feedback. Like literally, I would get on calls with them and even if they're one of those managers who just says, oh, great job on the call, keep doing what you're doing. That's not good enough. I literally would just ask them, hey, I appreciate that. What could I do better on this call? And just pause. I'll let them tell you and guide you. And this is really important because, again, you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes some leaders aren't really thinking about giving you feedback. But when you help guide them to start thinking this way, this helps them provide you feedback so you can get better at your job. I'll give you a really good example. This is even years after I've been in sales for years, had success. And I remember I was in the field, my VP of sales, and went to my very first call. And of course, I was a new rep at this time. And I really wanted to impress him. I was already a little nervous and stressed because a VP is riding with me. And so we're in my car. We're going to different appointments. I'm in my very, very first appointment. And I go through my process. And I could see like things are moving very nicely. And I one call, I'll close it. I'm excited. Like I'm really excited. And we get done. I asked him, I'm like, Ryan, hey, what did you think? He said, dude, that was awesome. That was great. That was a one call. That was absolutely incredible. And before I could say, what could I do better? He's, he was great. He just told me, he's, there's one thing I could recommend for you if you're open to it. I'm like, sure, what's up? He's like, hey, listen, early on, you're you, you going through the process, you're you going through your discovery. And because of questions you're asking, literally, they were salivating for the solution. Like literally salivating for the solution. Even though they're asking to see a solution, you pretty much kind of forced them to go through your sales process still of the whole product, like finishing the rest of the demo or finishing the rest of the discovery, going through the rest of the demo, going step-by-step, step, systematically going through. And yes, obviously you closed them, but I think we probably could have cut that sales call in half by adjusting on the spot. And that was a great just aha on the spot because I was so focused on trying to impress Ryan and show them that I knew how to sell and we're in an amazing selling process. I was I didn't adapt on the spot. So that was a really great lesson for me. Hey, sometime when the customer's saying, hey, where, where do I sign? We just gotta pay, pay close attention to and follow through. So that's why I love a tight feedback loop with your direct manager or different sales leaders because they can help guide you as well. On top of that, if you have a weekly one-on-one with them, they can, review your pipeline with you, they can review your numbers, and they can help you see things that you may not be seeing as well. So I know that's gonna help me ultimately so there's no surprises at the end of the quarter or at the end of the year. Number 10, I'm going to micromanage my metrics. By the way, these steps right here, these are all things I'd be doing early on. I wouldn't wait three months, six months, 12 months starting, but I literally be doing this from day zero. Once I start that role, I'll be doing all these things. So I'll start micromanaging my metrics. So I will be literally reviewing and tracking every step, every conversion step in the process from top of funnel all the way through the close. This allows me to identify exactly where I'm at so I can start testing and making changes so I can actually improve the conversion in my actual behavior and results as well. Now, majority of time these gonna be lagging metrics, but this gives me an idea about what I can fix for the future as well. I'll do the same thing as well where I'll be a little micromanaging my pipeline and my commissions. So literally, even to this day, this is years like even for my own business, I literally micromanage my own numbers Every single day, I look at my numbers so I know exactly where I stand so I can take the right actions for that day, for that month, for that quarter, and for that year. Don't want to happen is I don't want 11 months to go by and suddenly realize, oh, shoot, I'm only pacing to make 55K for the year. At that point, it's going to be very hard to actually make it up versus if I know exactly where I'm trending, where I'm pacing, I can take different actions today to change the outcome for the future. Number 11, the last thing I'll do is I'll start teaching others as I start to have success. I have found that when you are teaching what you are consistently doing, it helps you reinforce for yourself what you're doing. It helps you actually do it better because it's forcing you to take something potentially more complex to break it down very simply. So I'll give you a really simple example. I remember my first three months, I almost got fired in sales. Eventually, I started to figure out, started having success. The next three months, I hit number one every single month. And at that point, my VP came to me and said, hey, Marcus, we want to move you to another location. We want you to take over these other two reps. We want you to manage them, but you all have the same title. It's not a promotion, but your job is to get those people ramped up and get them up to speed. And if you do a really good job, then we'll promote you. I asked them if I got more pay. They said, no. <laughs> and on top of that, I had to rebuild my pipeline and everything else. Now, here's what's really cool, though. So I decided to take over that opportunity because, again, I'm about learning and not earning. 
and went over there and I was having some success as I mentioned, but it wasn't fully fledged out. But by, by being put in a position where I had to teach other people, it forced me to learn how to explain and teach what I was doing. That's actually the time when I bought my first sales playbook because I had to teach other people how to do outbound, how to cold call, how to cold email, how to follow, how to run sales calls. And because of that, it forced me to have to simplify it down even more so someone else that didn't know sales could figure it out. So that's why this step is so important because when, as you're starting to have success and you're starting to figure it out, by teaching other people, it can help reinforce what you have in your mind as well. So there you have it. By doing these 11 things consistently, I have zero doubt I'd make well over $100,000 a year, if not more. And obviously, the opportunity was really good. I can make far more as a result as my skills increase. Here's the cool part. I know based off past history by delivering results quickly, it opens more doors for larger compensation, promotions, equity, and so much more. It's how I was able to go from broke to averaging over $600,000 a year in B2B sales. Now, if you want the exact selling system that helped me average over 600K a year in sales, I give it all away in my program, Sales Accelerator Labs below. And you can get over $12,000 in gifts just for signing up. Now, if you want to see what the highest paying sales opportunities are out there, I'll see you in the next video right here.